Hello, I'm George Moxley. I want to talk to you today about a program from principle to practical. Taking the principles from God's Word and making them tangible, making them practical. We want to use the Scripture to begin with in Deuteronomy 11 verse 24 where God says, I will give you every place the sole of your foot touches. Wow! The practical part of that is to expand our footprint over our community to have the most effect in the area that we've been assigned to serve. What are practical ways to expand Expand that, foot, that footprint, taking that principle from the Word and making it practical. I want to talk to you today about, about designing and planning the service, the service, the church service, the thing that is our bread and butter, the thing that, that, that causes people to come and hear. How can they hear without a preacher? How can he preach lest he be sent? That thing that we hang everything on is the service that we're worshiping God and preaching the gospel. How do we plan it? How do we put together? Well, the first thing we got to do is actually plan it. As so the assignment I have now, the last five years, I travel all over the country going to a lot of different churches, mentoring, coaching, and preaching revivals. And I see a lot of people that you could tell the service had no plan to it, it had no direction. The mics wasn't turned on, the batteries wasn't changed, the, the, the light bulbs were, were out, and just simple things of that nature. You've got to, if you plan, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So you've got to plan that service. What is is, what is the, the ultimate goal of that, of that service? What, what's the purpose of that service? So we have to sit down and plan to make sure everyone is on the same team. I have seen it happen hundreds of times where, where a service is going and, and they, oh, I need a special. Well, Sister Sue, will you come up and, and sing a song? And, and she gets up there, well, I ain't had time to practice. Y'all just, y'all just listen to the words of this song. I get so frustrated, I want to jump up and say, hey, just give me a copy of the words. I'll read them when I get home. Don't practice on, on me. You should have been ready when you got here. I, as an evangelist, I go to all the Sunday schools that, I, that when I go to a church, if they have Sunday school, I go to it. And it's, 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 it's <laughs> I would say 60% of the teachers will get up. Well, I ain't had time to study this week. Let's just read it together. We've got the plan for that service with a, a service with a purpose to, to accomplish something for the kingdom of God. Now, I've learned, I've learned I always had mentors, and it's so important to have a mentor as you as you always get someone to pull you where they're at. That's a little higher, a little higher than than where that's, that's where you want to to go. And and an old an old preacher told me one time, says George, always remember if you waste a minute and you've got sixty people, you've wasted an hour. So I've designed over the years, and and I've worked it and critiqued it until I I had an order of service that that worked. Now understand. Now, we're Pentecostal, and the Holy Spirit has the opportunity to move in any time He wants to move, and that is great, and that is fine. But if you go in without a plan, oh, Lord, it gets chaotic in a, uh, in a hurry. So, this is a, uh, this is a, a, a simple uh, order of service that worked that work where I've been. The first thing we have, and it's got to start. Our service started at 1045. You've got to start it. you got to start it at 1045. Now, wait a minute. It, not be five minutes late. Don't have to go change the batteries at 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 ten fifty. No, no, no. You got to start it. And my music ministry and my music team would know. I want to start with a high praise. I want to start with something that people can relate to and tap their feet while they're walking in. Is that biblical? Of course it is. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with with praise. So I want something that they walk in happy. A lot of people will start out with real sad, real sad music. And if you're trying to reach harvest. No one wants to be sad. And so Ronnie Millsap made a million dollars on a song that said, Nobody Likes Sad Songs. So I start out with an upbeat pow song that they can come into and know this is a welcome place. When that's over, when that song finishes, let me back up. While that song is being played, when that song starts, it's my cue. Because I'm in the office with, with elders that are laying hands on me to stir up the gift within me that I can preach this gospel. We're having communion together uh, before. For every service we're having communion that we can walk out and be ready for the presence of God. When that, when that call to worship song's over, I run to the pulpit. We quote our vision statement. I run back to my seat and then they go into some praise, some praise and worship. When that's finished, I come up and I receive the tithe uh, and the offering. Never take over two minutes to take up the offering, but always make sure it's taken with a purpose and for a, for a reason. After that, there's a special 
song that comes, and then I come up and, 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 and preach the gospel or preach the message of the hour, give an altar call, and wow, what a service. There's been no time wasted. There's been no, naturally, during that offering, during the, the while the announcements are being scrolled over the screen or whatever, we're recognizing our visitors. We're letting them know how glad we are that they are, they are here. We got a visitor's packet that we give them. Inside that vis visitor's packet is a card for them to fill out with a perforated part they can tear off that has my personal cell number on it and the service time so they can be, they can be connected. We also develop a, a, a little brochure called Why? And it simply says, I hadn't always been Pentecostal. When I came, first came to a Pentecostal church, I wondered why people raised their hands. I wondered why people prayed all at one time. I wondered why people spoke in tongues. And I want to know why, why, why. And so when I became a pastor, I realized that I'm winning people that's never been exposed to a move of God. So I developed the why packet. And it just simply gives scriptures and, and gives, uh, gives doctrine on why, why we have audible praise. Why do we give in an offering? Why do we have this type of worship? Why do we lift our hands? Why do we clap our hands? Why do we stand when we sing? And that's just something they could know, that we're not weird, that everything we do is biblical, and they can feel it at home, at home there. The service is the most important thing that we can do. The service, when we come in and sing praises unto God, when we come in and hear the message of the hour, oh my goodness, plan that service. Now, let me back up and say this before I, I finish this segment, but, but hear me. There would be five days, five services every year that we plan that we would cast nets and bring people in. It would be big service. We'd strategically lay them out across the, across the year. We'd have each one reach one where I'd challenge everybody to bring one person. My motto would be, we're one away from doubling, just everybody's got to bring them. That's a service that we would plan for, pray for, and seek God for souls to be saved. Then we would have Family Friend Day. 87% of the people that's one to a church is family and friends of the people that attend uh, that church. Then naturally Easter is a natural one, but we wouldn't just have a, a regular service. We would, man, we would start working on Easter service in February because that's the day that we celebrate the resurrection, uh, the resurrection of the King. June was always a bad month for us because we weren't far, far from the coast. I would have the first Sunday of June, we'd call it Summer Blast Sunday. Day when we'd make t shirts and people would wear blue jeans and t shirts, we'd have hot dogs and hamburgers, but I'd preach the gospel. We'd plan that service out. And then we had a big homecoming to celebrate those that are going to heaven and celebrate also the, the, the legacy of the, of the church. Those five days were net casting days, and we took those visitors from that, and that became the harvest that we sought after. Because statistics tell me that if I if they'll come twice, I'm 80% chance I'm going to win them to the church. All this happens in the church service. It's so important to plan. It's so important to have it, have it as excellent as you can possibly make it. And it's so important to make everything count. If you'll do these things, I promise you, it'll expand your footprint in the community that you are living in.